some odd choices being made by the head coach in terms of lineup, in terms of halfback selection, when we were all raving about that pattern, he wasn't anywhere near the team. So there's, there's, there's stuff going on there. Huddersfield could have won by more than this. Jay Maymo, Mamo, have we settled on how we pronounce it? We keep it? hearing so he had much. Two, he had two chalked off. We keep hearing so much, don't we, about like these young players who apparently are getting too big for the boots and coaches trying to knock them down a peg or two and that sort of stuff. And they're the sort of murmurings we've had a few times about a few different players over the last probably two years. And yeah. and I don't I don't know if that's a, a situation here, but it just it doesn't it doesn't it just doesn't. Seem Why are your right. senior pros not stepping up when that starts happening though as well? Why is I'm not saying it shouldn't just be Tony Smith's job because Tony Smith's a wily, exceptionally experienced, high calibre. No, but the coach. senior pros, Tom, the people whose places they'll be taking in the side. So what? What? What are they gonna? Kevin Brown wants to play for England, so why is he going to be telling? Why is he not going to want Declan Patton out of the way so he can play? Because the people that pay his money and put put a roof over his head essentially are Warrington Wolves, and he should be invested enough in that club and their ethos to turn around and help and support the head coach in bringing some of these younger players into line. That's what should be if if that's what's happening. There's a couple there that you could say. What actually was the lineup for Warrington this week? Who actually did play? I, I know Penny played at fullback, and that was a. Well, it's a baffling decision when you've got Steph Ratchford on well, the same field. But they don't have any other... I think the problem is they didn't have any other centres. Right. Now, Patton played alongside Brown in this game, right. whereas he hasn't been picked before. What what I don't get is you've got King and Crosby in the 19-man squad, but you're not playing either of them. Mm. And you're putting Penny in at fullback out of position, moving Ratchford to centre, where he's a very, very capable centre, but he's not going to be as but you're dangerous. Yeah, exactly. and, and yet you could be putting Jack Hughes in the centre, mm-hmm. putting Savelio in the second row, starting, and having one of your big lads on the pitch yeah. to come in and, and change the impact. And I'd, look, they have to try different stuff, don't they? They have to try different players. They have to mix it up because it's not it's not going right Something's again. Not clicking from is it? At Warrington, but yeah, the head's just a down at the minute. This is the third game in a row where they've conceded. I think they're averaging about forty-two points a game in the last three games. Yeah, thirty-eight, forty-four, and uh, thirty-eight, forty-six, and whatever today was, um, forty-four. And Smith says the the, the low on confidence, but let's uh, let's let's yeah get on to what you were saying about Huddersfield. No, I mean it, look, it's good to see. It's probably been a long, it's been a long time coming in some respects. I know Huddersfield. This is a good a good strong result, and hopefully Huddersfield Huddersfield fans and. And, and Rick Stone are going to want to build on this because quietly they've started performing. Now I don't think it's any small coincidence that since Andy, uh, that since um, Ryan Inchcliffe, Andy Inchcliffe used to play left back for Everton, since Ryan Inchcliffe has started being deployed more at loose forward with you good time he played at Ucker. No, he played loose anyway. forward. Since he started playing his more natural position, and Uddersfield have had some younger, more upwardly mobile Uckers coming in who you know do a bit of work at nine. I don't think it's any coincidence that Huddersfield's performances have improved. On the back of, quietly a very strong pack that goes about its business quite nicely, I think. Especially, I mean, they came up against Warriors today, they were a bit powder puff, weren't they, on Sunday? But there's some talent and there's some explosive players in the side league. Gaskell settled in well. I mean, he comes in and does a good job for them, doesn't he? He's an explosive player. Jake Maymo, what an entertaining player to watch he's turning out to be from. We all sort of raised eyebrows at him coming from, he was from he was reserve grade, wasn't he? No, he played for the Knights, yeah. And he, he wasn't. But well, they were happy to get rid, which. Tells leaves you. with a question. Yeah, but sorry, I'm getting confused with uh, with Waitman. Hopefully, yeah. he left his um, his motorbike down under, and <laughs> therefore he should. I thought you were already up. He should be fit to play most of the time. Um, Look, it's a good two points. It's a strong win, and it does Huddersfield's morale the world of good. Asterix, it was a terrible warning inside. But what, shuffled about. What you look at with this Huddersfield side is it was probably the most experienced back line yeah. field in all season yeah. um, with Jordan Turner coming in yeah, putting a... Murphy back on the wing yeah. now Murphy's a very solid player does a good job any which way he's not explosive but he does a great job and finishes off everything that you put put his way and Jordan Turner is a centre that's going to put things his way because yeah, you know I think he's a very very decent player mm-hmm. um, in there he, he consistently performed well for St Helens yeah. when he played in the centres over the last yeah. few years so so I don't see it being necessarily any different plus he can take a turn in the half they have a good starting they have a good starting front row um, and they don't lose anything whilst the game switches up a little bit when Leeming goes off and O'Brien comes on in the mm-hmm. hooking department Leeming was creative in this game but O'Brien is very good at distributing the ball as well so they've settled on that and I think we spoke about that happening before the season started and mm-hmm. they finally caught up to that got that yeah um, and then yeah they do they don't have as good a, a bench 
forward pack as they have the starting forward pack but Akuma Tai will be back soon Add, adding to that Shannon Wakeman has found some sort of form mm-hmm. um, because Ike Hifo has been absolutely outstanding mm-hmm. for them this year yeah phenomenal phenomenal player what did the stats tell us on this I'm, pre- I'm assuming that statistically Huddersfield were on top in pretty much every department yeah well wins in all the key stats for Huddersfield and the line they were the better side biggest wins were five fewer errors made another 16 from Warrington in this one that's been the story of their year, and it? One point, seven percent better team tackle success as well. Something that ordinarily Wire have still managed to do okay with, but not this time around. Mm. And then two hundred ninety-seven more meters for the Giants with Wire falling below one thousand in total. There you go. Individually, who stood out for us then? Jerry McGilvery, two tries, one try assist, five tackles, one hundred and seventy-two meters, three clean breaks. Jake Mamo, one try, one hundred and thirty-five meters. Sebastian Ikehifo, one hundred and three meters. Jordan Turner. With one try and two try assists on his debut. Anybody do anything for Warrington? Well, Benjamin Julian worked hard in defence, 43 tackles. Chris Hill made 182 of their, what, 960 or so metres that the team had. There you go. One player doing all that. Where's the rest? One player's doing 20% of your work near enough. Yeah. Not on? No. Simply not on. Okay, um... Although the other half of Cheshire will have been in a good mood this weekend, Mark, because Widnes Vikings are off the bottom of the table thanks to 26 points to 6 victory over the Catalan Dragons in front of 4,253 down at the Vikings. Strong old Ben Thaler was the referee. Yeah, Paul O'Brien, POB1976, said, Not the greatest of games, but another win from the Vikings. Good defence and some great passing today from Widnes. Catalans have to be the dirtiest team in Super League with four players being simbined. Happy to get another win, which moves us off the bottom of the table. Neil McEwen says, Amazing performance by Widnes. Should have been by a great margin. Rangy Chase finding his feet and really controlling the game. The forwards stepped up. Catalan only came to spoil it. Dirty twats. Bring on Saints on Friday night. Praying emoticon. Paul Luda Lewis said, Rangi Chase, kiss my face. Great, <laughs> great performance from the Vikings against the MMA tactics of the Catalan dirtbags. Everything just clicked into place. Rangi was controlling the game, the props making meters, and Chris Bridge was involved in several altercations without getting injured once. Oh, For the first time this season, I actually feel confident of staying up without the million pound game. Bets fucking in. There you go. Gareth wow. Sunley says... Can't say it was the best game of rugby. Five yellows and Catalans taking five minutes to pack down for any scrum. Sort of that. But it's the result that counts. Chase added the thread we have been missing in attack. Uh, or the threat, sorry. And it's no surprise the centres have looked better since he got here. But can with two tries even if the media is giving one a dozen. Uh, no longer bottom. Can we climb any higher? Yeah, that was weird that the game... The match report said Dudson scored, but the same the same match report stats had no try for Dudson. Had two tries for Jack Buchanan. Maybe we're just astounded that Jack Buchanan managed two tries. I tell you what, Catalan started this with a relatively easy looking Sam Moa try. Yes. <laughs> if I, at, at that point, um, Bridge and Thornley were already off for the first two yeah, Simmons of, yeah. the, of the game, weren't they? And that, to me, would have had me worried as a, as a witness fan, but. Um, not to be for Catalan the rest of the aren't game. made of st- Catalan aren't mentally strong enough for me though. So whilst it's a good start for them, they just they, they, they fl- away from. I, I honestly think they're just targeting home games now. They're just they're, they're coming. They're, they're clearly spoiling it and and trying to be. You say that, what but they're playing Moa Casti, Greg Bird. Maybe there's not a lot of other options to to mm. go in those places. But they were playing all these all these big players. Um, you know, and Gigo is back in. You got Inno and Walsh and Milo there, your big names. For me, this point about everyone's making about Catalan being dirty and scrappy and the similar sorts of points were raised about the performance against Hull FC, but they were able to come out on the right side of that mm. one. We all remember the Catalan identity of being flair and attack. Yeah. And that sort of stuff. And under Fraser New, weirdly, that's eroded away yeah. somewhat. Yeah. Um, but why has it got even worse under the Gise Monaghan sort of reign? What's that about? Well, Gise didn't mind putting it about, it, did he? No, he didn't, but... Jamal Fakir's not far away from that coaching setup up either. From but what you've, got, you've got... You've got, like, backs getting simbined here, haven't you? Mm. In In... Thornley for the fight, and then 
my Luffer, well, holding down, I don't know if that was a team was a warning team thing or, watch, or, or was it holding down professional foul? I'm, I'm not seeing the, the highlight of that particular incident. Yeah. And then in the second half, you get some fun, uh, some forwards. John Zari, he's got a great T charge, hasn't he, mm. for, for what he got up to there. Um, what is that? Why? Is it uh, uh, Greg Bird's always been a grubby player as well, hasn't he? Is that an influence? Possibly. Uh, mate, well, he's certainly always been a grubbier player in his later period. He's always been one for the origin niggle, hasn't he? Mm. And that sort of thing. And I, f- I just think it's it's strange that it's got worse. It's counterintuitive, than, isn't it? That rather than improve. But well, for, maybe for not, witness. Maybe not from a Catalan point of view, then. Maybe the interim coaching setup isn't as strong in terms of their personalities as you would hope. Um, or as strong in terms of personality as Lord Frasier perhaps was, and maybe they're losing control a little bit, and the, and the players are going out and acting with a bit of indiscipline because they don't fear the ramifications, and they're unhappy with the way the season's going, and they're acting out a bit, yeah. with a bit of frustration, possibly. The, the, I, I'm never a massive fan of this interim coaching malarkey unless there's a strong move to get someone in. Um, just saying, oh, we'll have some interim coaches until we find it. Just it leaves things up in the air for me. I don't think it works for players' mentality necessarily. I like the way St. Helens did it. We've got an interim coaching set up. We are actively recruiting. And then Mike Rush went out and did that and, and did it very, very well in the way he went. Not very well. I don't know if it's going to pan out. But what I mean is they did it very well in terms of the way they went about finding three players, presenting so three The approach that Corbyn would approve of based on his. Uh, Absolutely. For the last Absolutely. Friday night. There you go. He basically was describing how they can get rid of. Help get rid of discrimination in yeah. recruiting. I was just thinking, Justin Holbrook. <laughs> I was going to say, you've been spending some time with Mike Crush, haven't you? Um, but I'm not a big fan of this interim coaching setup. I do think it leaves a power void there, and maybe that's causing some of the indiscipline and some of the, you know, a, a poor team ethic to start to rear its head at Catalans. Whereas maybe phrasing it, whilst results weren't going their way, maybe being the slightly more powerful person in terms of you know I don't know do you not think the they're trying to put the emphasis on kind of physicality when they're bringing in new players into the side that either don't have the skill or maybe they don't want to expose them as much so they're trying to make the more mature players slow the game down with this sort of niggle so I don't know but, Absolutely. but it's not going to power for them because, team, because referees and other teams are wise to it well one of the things like when you watch this one they scored a couple of tries down the we just scored a couple of tries down their left Catalan's right now mm. that's the side that Inu and yeah. Yaha will be on now you'd think size wise they could compete but if you look at the Corey Thompson try in particular it just goes right through through Yaha mm. like, there's a, a lack of effort there on that one yeah. And things Inu's opened up defender, ridiculously for Hambry's try. Mm. Now Hambry, um, as much as Rangi Chase apparently controlled this game, so much the highlights showed Hambry for flashes and flashes, and it also showed um, young Jordan Johnston doing what we've talked about, being a far better hooker at the Super League level yeah. than he is a halfback in his distribution from from hooker. I mean, yes, really Jack Buchanan's second try most definitely should have been stopped, just like Sam Moe's try, there could have been more kind of defence in there mm. for that one the other way around. But these are signs that witness were taking what was given to them, but Carl was just way off, yeah. way but, off. Yeah, it wasn't five-star rugby league from either side, but witness took their chances and, and, and took advantage of some pretty poor... Catalan discipline and effort, I would say. Yeah, it's definitely them. It's a nice positive. The bottom. And positive you, vibe around And you're getting um, Matt Whitley back in the team after an injury injury layout. So, so that's a, a positive. Massive positive. Rangie Chase really started good. to fit in. That's mm-hmm. a positive. Things are looking better for the Vikings, and and I like that because I like Dennis Betts. I do too. Um, okay, what did the stats tell us? Where are we? Massive witness wins are 1.4 meters per carry, better average gain, 484. Three meters more and seven clean breaks to two, as well as a six point nine percent better team wow. tackle success. Carlan scraped just to a thousand meters, under ninety percent team tackle success. Not good enough from them. On the numbers, in truth, you may have expected an even bigger witness win. There you go. So individually, who stood out for the bike? Well, Jack Buchan- Buchanan did score those two tries, one hundred and seven meters. Corey Thompson with a try, one hundred and seventy meters, two clean breaks. Reese Hambry with a try, 109 metres, two clean breaks. Chris Bridge, five tackle busts, 171 metres, despite his early rest. And Charlotte Runciman, two try assists, 125 metres. I see her doing well. So, Anyone... you know, some big performances from the outside backs, mm. as well as uh, some of the forwards getting involved. But that's what we talked about at times, when winners have had these positive performances. Actually, 
They've got some capable forwards who, if they get playing together as a group, can can lay a platform. They've just not got enough of them who play well enough regularly enough. None of them are consistently good, those forwards. But distribution is... Other than Cahill's effort. They've been lacking distribution out of back, that's the thing. And now they've got a bit more of that and a bit more... Not settled, because I don't think you ever settled in Ryan Chase, but they've got a bit... 